Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhouseonboon.com and today I wanna to show you how to make homemade sourdough waffles. So if you've been following along a while, you know how much I love my sourdough starter. I made it eight years ago plus, I don't even know exactly how long. So it's a nice old mature starter and we like to make so many things from it. More on that at the end of this video, but for now, let's get into the recipe. This is a lot like my sourdough pancake recipe, just very slight tweaks, and it is something very delicious that my family loves. We're gonna start with two cups of fed sourdough starter. Now, if you're brand new to the world of sourdough, this just basically means that I have fed my sourdough starter with flour and water and allowed it to sit at room temperature long enough to be nicely fermented. So when I say fed, that's what I mean. Now, if you just fed it with flour and water an hour ago, what you have is not fermented grains. So I'm talking about fed starter, which means it's had a chance to ferment. Now, I don't get very particular about the hydration level. I just add flour and water. I never measure until it's about pancake batter-ish. I've never had a problem. I definitely have some people who ask me that question a lot and I just honestly don't worry too much about it. It's more of just getting familiar with your starter than an exact science. Okay, to that I'm gonna add two eggs. We get these from a local farm. Soon our own chickens will be laying, but they aren't just yet. A quarter cup of oil. Using coconut oil, you could also use butter. And then an additional tablespoon. I like my waffles extra crispy, and so I like to add just a little bit of extra oil. Half a teaspoon of salt. A teaspoon of cinnamon. And then two tablespoons of honey. We buy ours by the gallon from the local Amish community. Now I estimate, but for the recipe followers, two tablespoons, you can put it into the measuring thing that you just used for the oil and it'll slide out a lot easier. A teaspoon of vanilla. And then I'm gonna go ahead and give this a stir. Now I'm still gonna be adding the baking soda, but I like to add that after I've stirred everything together because it makes everything bubble up really nicely when it just hits it last and I really like that. Once everything else is incorporated, one teaspoon of baking soda. Now make sure to kind of get the clumps out because you don't want to be biting into baking soda. All right, now I'm gonna use these cast iron waffle irons. Basically the way that you make this work, it's like using any other thing cast iron related. You have to preheat it, you have to use a cooking fat, you cannot put cold food on a cold cast iron skillet. So I have both sides of the skillet preheating before I make contact with the food. It works, it's just a little bit tedious, especially if you're making waffles for a crowd. So once both sides are preheated, I will add my waffle batter and then cook it a little bit on both sides and we'll have waffles. If you're brand new to cast iron, make sure to check out my how to use cast iron. I have how to season it how to cook with it, all my tips and tricks. I love it, it's all I use in my kitchen for cooking everything else. I'll leave a link in the description below for that video and blog post. Another tip for cooking waffles in the cast iron skillet waffle maker is don't overfill it. So if you do overfill it, obviously it's going to spill out the sides. And so I like to do about a cup of batter on the size that I get from Amazon. Another is don't open it until it's done. Now, if you try to open it before it's done, you'll notice that it's gonna be sticking and pulling apart in the middle. If you close it back up quickly before you um, open it fully and allow it to cook longer on both sides by flipping the iron over, it will release and you will be able to pull it out. Now, another thing, it's just like any other cast iron cooking. I talked a lot about this in my how to cook crispy potatoes in the cast iron skillet but you don't wanna flip very often. You want to get that nice, brown, crispy waffle texture on the outsides, and you do that by not opening it in this case. That'd be equivalent to flipping with the potatoes. So I like to cook it for about three or four minutes on one side and then flip it and cook on the other side and then not open it. 
again if you do start to open it notice that it's not quite done and it's sticking just close it back up and you should be good you want to make sure that it's well seasoned before you begin because cleaning out in between all of those little squares is not something you want to do so you can visit my video again on how to season cast iron and prepare it once it's good and hot and you're making waffles it goes really fast you just need to make sure you preheat it before starting i have two of them so i can get all four going on my four burners and then it's a pretty quick process after that once they are nicely heated up I can make two at a time and just keep going because they don't lose heat quickly at all. So the whole time you're making waffles, they're gonna be really hot. You're gonna to need to use a hot pad the whole time you're working with these or you'll burn your hands. You cannot touch the handles. You need to have hot pad readily accessible. I will have the link to this cast iron waffle maker in my Amazon shop. So amazon.com slash shop slash farmhouse on Boone. I will also link it below. I update with all of my favorite kitchen products. So like the instant pot that I use with the yogurt setting and the fermenting lids, everything I use in my kitchen, grain mill, mixer, it's all there. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this sourdough waffle recipe. Visit the link below. I have the printable recipe card on my blog. I also just made a brand new page on my blog where I have all of my sourdough recipes on one page. So once you get your sourdough starter made, if you follow my directions in a much earlier video on how to actually make your starter, you can just go to my blog, go to the sourdough page and start making. There are so many recipes and I'm updating them as I come up with more. I will be putting them on there as well. So that's the place to go. It's I believe farmhouseonboon.com slash sourdough or sourdough recipes. Either way, I'll link it below so you can click it and head over to that page. All right, well, if you're brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.